This is Algebra Review. We're going to look at three worked examples. One of the worked examples we're going to do twice, so it's really four worked examples. Um, the first one is V equals D over T. And it looks fairly straightforward. The difficulty is the denominator has the unknown. So we're trying to solve for D, for T, and it happens to be in the denominator. Okay. The correct way to handle this is to get the unknown out of the denominator. And the way you do that is you multiply both sides by t. So you're multiplying by the entire denominator. That gives you... And once you get it in that format, most people have no trouble solving it. You're just going to go ahead and divide both sides through by v. The v's cancel. And of course, we have t equals d over v. Simple and straightforward. It's so easy. It looks so obvious that people say, how could you possibly mess that up? Well, people do. I'm going to write the wrong way to do it in green. So you don't think it's correct. This is the wrong way to do it. It's rotten. Okay. People say, oh, I want to solve for t. And that means that t has that pesky little d hanging around. So I'm going to get rid of the d by multiplying both sides by d. And then I have dv equals t, and I'm done. Well, there's two things that they did wrong here with this technique. The first is when you have d multiplying, what you really get is d times d, or d squared over t. The next thing is right here. You have 1 over t, which they magically assume reverts itself to t without doing any algebraic operations. 1 1,000th of a dollar bill is, does not magically become $1,000. does not work that way. Okay? You cannot magically make the t revert itself. So there's two things wrong with this, but overall the big thing is it's just the wrong way to proceed. When you have the unknown in the denominator, the first thing you do is multiply both sides by that entire denominator. Get it out of there. If you do that, your life will be much, much simpler. Our next one is Vf, v squared, Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2AD. Okay. First, I want to talk about these subscripts. We have a Vf and we have a Vi. That makes this vf different than vi. So those subscripts means these are two different v's or velocities. Okay, So you've got to be careful. You can't just say, oh, they're both v's. I can handle them the same. They're not. The other thing is these squares up above. In physics, the numbers up above means it's a mathematical operation. So that doesn't make it a unique id. It means that we're doing mathematically something to that velocity. So with that in mind, Let's take a look at our problems. First, we're going to solve for a. So we take a look over here, and we see that we have a 2ad being added to a vi. So I want to get rid of the vi squared first before I worry about what's next to the a. So I'm going to subtract vi squared from both sides. Tracking it from both sides gives me a vf squared minus vi squared equals 2ad. So now I've got va in one term by itself, but it's being multiplied by a 2 and multiplied by a d. So I'm going to divide through on both sides by 2d. Of course, the 2 cancels with the 2, d cancels with the d, and we're left with vf squared minus vi squared divided by 2d equals a which is the correct solution. Let's go back up. Now we're going to solve for vi. So again, we have a vi squared. And this time we're saying, well, it's being added to this with this 2ad. So I want to get rid of the 2ad. So I'm going to subtract 2ad from both sides. That gives me vx squared minus 2ad equals vi squared. And we're looking pretty good here. We have vi squared by itself. We don't want to solve for vi squared. We want to solve for just plain old vi. So that means we need to take a square root here. 
we do the square root on one side, we have to do the square root on the other side. And it's important to realize we're doing a square root of the entire side. So it's for that entire quantity. So looking at the correct answer, we have vi equals the square root of v of squared minus 2ad. And again, that square root is for this entire quantity, not just for vf squared. And that is the correct solution. Okay, that was fairly straightforward. We're going to go to our last one now. We're going to take this complex looking thing and we're going to solve for vs. Again, remembering that subscript describes that particular v. So that particular v is specific and the only place it shows up is there, which happens to be the denominator. We also have an fd and fs, and those are two different things. They're not the same. And we have a vd, and we have just a plain old v, which, by the way, shows up twice in the equation. So because the unknown is in the denominator, we're going to have to, of course, multiply by the denominator to get it out of there. And we're going to multiply by that whole term. So looking at the equation, we have v minus vs in the denominator. So we're going to multiply both sides by the entire denominator, v minus vs. Over on this side, this cancels out with this. So we've knocked it out of the denominator. We can just rewrite the other side. Okay, we've rewritten the other side. Um, it's still looking a little nasty. We're trying to get Vs by itself. So the next step we have to do is divide through by just F sub D. This is F sub D is multiplying this entire quantity. So I'm going to divide both sides by F sub D. This F sub D cancels out with this one. We're getting close to having Vs by itself, but we're still not quite there. We have uh, a negative Vs, which is going to cause problems, and we have this V over here. So we have to do another step. We're going to subtract V from both sides. This V comes out with this, and now we can rewrite it. Okay, we now have a negative Vs equals Fs times the quantity v plus vd, divided by f sub d, that quantity, minus v. Okay, there's only one thing left to do, and that would be to get rid of the negative sign. To do that, it's fairly straightforward. We're going to multiply both sides in their entirety times negative 1. This negative 1 is going to go over to here and make it negative, and it's going to go over to here and make it positive. And now we have the final format. Vs equals V minus this gigantic big fellow, F sub S times V plus Vd divided by F sub D. And that ends our algebra review. Thank you so much for your time.